Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. Today we continue with the abhumans of the Ogrens as we jump into part 2. So let's get into 40 Facts About the Ogrens. Ogrens dwell on worlds far from the Emperor's light, and sadly often fall into the worship of the ruinous powers. The forces of chaos often forcibly fill Ogrens into their ranks. Known as Ogren Brutes, the servants of the Dark Gods will utilize crude surgical procedures, forbidden combat drugs, and sorcerous rituals in order to control the beasts and set them upon their enemies. Through the use of further modifications and forbidden methods, Chaos Renegades have also created two distinct variants of Ogren Brutes. Ogren Berserkers are Ogrens that are surgically altered using prescribed neurological and biochemical processes. This crude adaptation starts by lobotomizing the Ogren, turning it into a docile creature, unable to even feed itself and becoming utterly enslaved to its masters until the chemical injectors installed directly into their upper back are activated. The injectors deliver a cocktail of potent, highly dangerous drugs, including the banned combat drug called Slot, into the Ogren's bloodstream and muscles. Slot, once favored by the notorious Flesh Terror Space Marine chapter and the World Eater's Traitor Legion, stimulates the subject's adrenal glands and the neural pathways to areas of the brain that govern aggression. With these driven into override, the user becomes a raging psychopath driven by bloodlust that cannot be satisfied. Other drugs are also injected, including drugs that give the user massively increased strength and are almost superhuman ability to block pain, with side effects such as induced hallucinations and a desire for self-mutilation. Strong beta adrenal receptor blocking drugs augment the Ogren's pain threshold, allowing the Ogren to fight on with terrible wounds that would usually kill any other man. The downside of this drug-fueled rampage is that the body's system is not likely to be able to cope with the drugs for long, and the vital internal organs will quickly start to fail. Ogrim Berserkers were used as expandable troops during the Siege of Vrax by the Vraxian Traitor Militia, and were not supposed to survive the first encounters with their enemies. They were a one-use weapon hurled into the enemy in furious counterattacks, with the single aim of inflicting as much damage as possible before collapsing or being slain. Plague Ogrens are hideous, distorted creatures, bulking masses of bloated, diseased flesh and twisted mutations. The effects of Nurgle's gifts on the already massively strong and hardy Ogren frame are particularly foul, and they prove ideal breeding grounds for nightmarish plagues of all kinds. In battle, these creatures can prove almost impossible to kill, and their mere touch brings a horrific death. The first plague Ogrens are believed to have been created by the mysterious renegade Astarte warband known as the Tainted on Vrax Prime during the infamous Siege of Vrax. A faction devoted to Nurgle in his aspect as a mortifier of flesh, they are said to have worked the darkness of their sorcerous arts on the already distorted and chemically augmented Ogren slaves being used by rebel forces on Vrax. Since the war, Ordo Malus Savants believe that the secrets of creating plague Ogrens have been refined by the tainted deep within the Eye of Terror and they now trade these vile beasts amongst the servants of the Lord of Decay, in return for fresh subjects on which to practice their twisted crafts. Now let's dive into some lore about notable Ogrens like Nork Duddog. He is a legend in his own lifetime, an Ogren whose fighting abilities as an Imperial Guard soldier are almost as astonishing as his mental development that could only be called precocious for one of his race. Due to his unusual mental ability, he quickly came to the attention of the commissars of the Imperial Guard, and Nork soon found himself placed on special duties. Nork's reputation for loyalty is unsurpassed, and his skills as a bodyguard have been in high demand by the Imperial officers across the galaxy. Another notable Ogren, Urok has served among the ranks of the 233rd Katachan Jungle Fighters for many years. Having been tithe at a very young age, he has become increasingly attached to the Little Uns. 
he serves alongside, especially an old Katachan by the name of Gorion. Unfortunately, in the recent assaults, Gorion was shot and killed by a group of orc boys. Uruk was inconsolable for days, and he now became hungry for revenge against the orcs. Ogrins are stubborn and dim-witted, usually only speaking in broken low gothic, and Uruk is no exception. He is slow to react, but fiercely loyal, always coming to the aid of his comrades and always willing to follow the orders of his commissar. The recent loss of the little un, Gurion, has caused Uruk to act uncharacteristically aggressive. He has started to act on his own initiative, doing anything he can to get revenge on the orcs that killed his friend. Like stated in the Imperial Guard 40 Facts video, some units need to work as detachments and are connected to regiments. The Ogrens are one of these units, but there is a few notable all Ogren regiments, like the 51st Abhuman Penal Suppression Detachment, made up of those Ogrens deemed unfit for frontline duty, either due to permanent injury or exceptionally limited intellect. The administratum within the Spinward Front has put these damaged Ogrens to work abroad the prison barge, Oath of Judgment, as wardens. The vessel routinely travels around sectors, taking on military prisoners, guardsmen who have failed to adhere to the strict regulations of their regiment, or committed some minor crime that is undesiring of summary execution. The upper decks of the vessel remain sealed at all times, and the Ogrens patrol the lower decks with the prisoners, told to keep anyone smaller than themselves from causing trouble. So far this practice has worked, with prisoners for the most part intimidated by the Abhumans, and the Ogrens too stupid to fall for any of their tricks. On occasion the suppression detachment is also used as a policing role in the Imperial Navy vessels or Imperial Guard bases, where their heavy handed tactics can be used to quell riots and round up criminals. The Imperial Guard regiments of Cadia constitute a large proportion of those forces fighting for the Spinward Front. Many of these shock troops arrive with their own abhuman detachments in tow having served alongside them in other sectors. The 1636th Iron Arm Bulwark Squad has fought with the Cadian 818th Shock Troop for at least a decade, the lumbering Ogrens of the squads forming fast bonds with the Guardsmen. In battle, the Iron Arm Bulwark Squad is used for holding actions and shock assaults. Their mighty slab shields and maul smashing into enemy formations or holding them at bay. In the battle for Bridge 212, the Iron Arms proved their work time and time again as they held back the rampaging orc force of Wa Grimtooth. Three times the Goth warbands tried to cross the bridge and three times the Ogrens threw them back. Another very famous Ogren type is the Bulgrens, which are clad in custom made carapace armor made out of discarded tank tracks and carry crude assault weaponry intended to capitalize on the abhuman stature and resilience. While some wield power mauls and buckler-like brute shields, the simple but effective slab shields are their trademark, locking together to form a mobile defense line. These Bulgrins provide their comrades with a wall of walking cover as they advance across battlefields soaking up vast volumes of enemy fire. The Ogrens take their protective duties very seriously and will often form a line at the slightest sound of gunfire which can be most inconvenient in crowded trenches. Yet Imperial Guardsmen advancing behind Bulgren squads swiftly forget such mishaps as shots whine harmlessly from the Ogren shield leaving those soldiers crouched and unharmed. Casualties are high among the Abhumans themselves, but the close range bombardment of the Ogrens, grenade gauntlets, exact brutal revenge soon enough. The foe are left reeling and shell shocked even before the maw wielding Ogrens charge into their midst and destroy the survivors to a red paste. Ogrens make excellent bodyguards, for they are loyal, determined, and extremely hard to kill. Among the officer cadrons of Imperial Guard regimental commands, it is considered a great honor to have an oath-bound Ogren bodyguard. 
There are some instances where an Ogryn will form a bond of fellowship with a low-ranking officer or even regular guardsman. The simple minds of these hulking abhumans can for some reason become fixated upon a particular human, especially if the human shows some kind of kindness. Once an Ogryn connects with the Imperial soldier, the bond becomes almost unbreakable. Reports from various war zones confirm that this has happened on several occasions, with charismatic and courageous junior officers acquiring for themselves the undying loyalty of one of the abhuman shock troops. And those were 40 facts about the Ogrens. Now that puts our Ogren videos to a close. That is all the lore I have for you, but we're going to continue to talk more about different abhumans throughout the week. So please subscribe to the channel to get those and of course more lore videos to come. Thank you so much if you're already a subscriber. By you liking, commenting, and sharing, you're helping One Mind Syndicate keep putting out awesome lore videos. And if you want to make suggestions, please just comment down below and tell me what broad video um, topic you would like to hear about. Thank you so much for watching. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.